Good day and welcome to ASK's Online Academy. Today's topic will be exact cast paddings who will be presented by Marcus Federici. Marcus is the technical expert in feeding solutions for ASK Chemicals Europe. And I'll be moderating this talk. My name is Dave Heckman. I am the product manager for feeding systems for ASK Chemicals in North America. So thank you, David, and hello and welcome to everybody here listening to the webinar today. Um, I will try to lead you a little bit through the world of uh, paddings, exact cast paddings. Um, and this is our small agenda for today. So we will clarify at first, what is this a padding? So, and if we know what it is, where, when do I need this and how do I design it? The design would be our main focus here. And afterwards we will go on and say, how do we create or how do we produce such kind of paddings and use it in the casting process? And after all, we will summarize a little bit and answer your questions. So at, fa at first, we will try to uh, tell you what is a padding. So a padding is a exothermic or insulating piece of material, which is freely moldable that you can put on your casting surface. It is uh, thought that this will assist you to get a directed solidification in your process. That means it is additional tool you, you have uh, beside your well-known risers and chill iron designs you use uh, day by day in your foundries. So with this kind of padding, this is uh, made of insulating or exothermic material. You can imagine this as a kind of uh, additional cast material, but only in a thermal way, not in the material way. So that means you can leave your geometry of the component in the state where your designer or your customer wants to have it and maybe just simulate the thermal issue or the thermal um, issues of a of a additional material which you normally place on that uh, parts. So when do I need this? So the first focus we have and the main driver for using a padding is in our point, from our point of view, always the feasibility of a casting component. That means in every case, if you have any issues by uh, a feasibility of, or a castability of, of, a, of a casting, you can use a padding when there are problems in feeding distances, difficult to access residual solidification areas, and um, if you have any issues by, uh, or if there is a change in geometry need that you can real, uh, then you can realize a, a feeding there, uh, you can always think about using, uh, use uh, a padding in this way. So, a padding is therefore uh, very uh, good for lightweight constructions where you have a lot of bosses with thin walls connected. Here you can have uh, huge benefits. And also if you have no uh, place for your, for your risers in the, in the mold box or you have a, a huge ways to go with your, with your feeding distance, then always a padding may be a good solution here. And also you can save costs for uh, removing your additional casting material as we show you in this small example. So this is a very simple uh, steel casting geometry. It's a ring shaped geometry where you have, uh, as you might know it, some, some bumps on, on the sides under the riser so that you can have the right feeding distance that your feeders are working and your feeding solution is working. And what you can do here with a padding is you can just simulate in a thermal way these kind of bumps or this kind of extra material with this exothermic padding you put aside direct under the, under the riser. In that case, we can save about 30 hours of settling time 
and we have, of course, uh, a less, uh, less casting weight of the total component here. So therefore, you can, this is a very simple um, example, which we can show you here, but this is a, a good working solution and shows you about uh, the opportunities you will have by using paddings in your uh, casting process. So what are uh, the, the advantages using these kind of materials? So you can improve yield. So this you can manage by different, uh, by different uh, steps. So you can combine riser, you can uh, try to feed uh, more than one node with one uh, with one riser by combining them and um, made uh, the 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 feeding possible over there. You can save cleaning costs, as you can see in the small examples. You have a shorter time to market with your with your casting because you have no changes or not that much changes you have to discuss uh, with with the designer of the of the component so you can react much faster and in that case you can also expand your foundry's portfolio of castings because you can do parts which you maybe uh, uh, um, were not been able in the past to, to cast them before so you have a high degree of freedom in the geometric way how to design it because it's more or less the same uh, degree of freedom you have with a with a code box core or uh, or a core itself it's easy to operate and you can use it in core sections as well as on the um, molding side therefore you can reduce the total weight of your components dramatically and so you can also um help your customer and the designer uh, because they are always looking for savings of weight in their components and in their castings in the next uh few slides we will like we would like to show you how you design such kind of paddings so we will uh check what this how this how this is working so we start with a geometry which is imaginary but i'm pretty sure uh, you have seen those kind of geometries uh, in in your daily business in a, in a foundry so this could be a single uh, connection plate or this could be also a part of a bigger housing like a crankcase or something like that uh, in many cases these kind of geometries are used to um, bring two components together to screw another component on a housing or something like that. What we normally do here is that we try to feed this um, with, a, with a standard riser, either exothermic or insulating or whatsoever. You can place this above the, the geometry and uh, try to do that. But as you can see already, when I place a riser, which is the right, the, the right size or the, the modulus you, you have to use here, uh, you see there is no space for placing on every boss a riser. So um, we have a issue here with our standard riser placement portfolio. So I think this is not a well-known uh, thing in a, in a foundry. So also the simulation result here is quite unsatisfactory that you can see on the left hand, you have the hotspot uh, of the casting, which means the residual um, melt areas or the, 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 the areas where the, the last uh, solidification takes place. And depending on that, we also have the porosity on the right side. And you can see that in all the bosses you have uh, porosity in these castings and the problem in many cases is these bosses you have in threads or holes or something like that so in, during machining you will open these porosities and mostly this will be seen as scrap and this is every time an issue 
So we don't want to have that. So what is the, the first thing we can do? As I first mentioned, maybe you can imagine that it is, or the, the, the padding material makes the component behaving like I add material. And the easiest way for me would be if the plate was massive. So that means we just take it and fill it with exothermic material. In that case, you just uh, bring in the exothermic material and uh, you place a, a riser sleeve on top. And to have a better separability, you can also add uh, a breaker edge here. And the rest of the, of the geometry of your padding is the negative on, of your casted component. So this one, we will put in simulation and check for the results. Uh, the next few, uh, the, the next examples when we show some videos, uh, it's always the solidification um, of the of the casting show. That means we show the fraction liquid, and everything which is already solidified, the material will be faded out. So we will start with our first video here to check for our solidification. What we can see, there is a huge difference between the solidification behavior in these two components. On the left side, you see the design with the padding. On the right side, you see the design without the padding, with a standard riser on top. So what you can see is that your walls are freezing very early, in a very early stage during solidification compared to that geometry with the padding where the walls stay a long time longer open and enable solidification through those thin walls towards the riser. So you have a perfect directional solidification. Even if you just have thin walls, you just keep them open with the energy you put in with the exothermic material, which we call the padding. So that means for us, if we compare the hotspot and the porosity of this of the same casting, just with two different uh, ways of just with and without padding, you can see the hotspot with the padding is just in the residual riser. Without the padding, you have the hotspots as seen in the in the first slide within the casting. And of course, the porosity behaves in the same way. That means that you have a sound casting here with a padding. And without the padding, you have the porosity and the issues in machining. So that means that was a very good first example. It was a, uh, a hit in the first shot, which is always nice. But we want to show you also that there can be some uh, restraints you have to you have to consider. So therefore, we will also have a look on the second geometry. And we want to show you that this design of a padding is mostly an iterative process. So you will test uh, a way you need to simulate. And then you check for the results. And uh, so you can find the best way. But it's um, as you can, as you will see, there's always uh, a movement in that. Position. So in that case, we start with a with a fitting, a hub, a flange, whatever. So it's a, a it's a geometry which is also not very rare in the in the foundry business, and especially here we have um, a narrowing section which will part the solidification in an upper part and in a lower part, and this narrowed section will freeze very in a very early stage during the solidification process. So we will have big issues by feed this part through the wall with a, without a padding. So the standard, um, a standard way of doing that is to place two to four risers. We decided here for two. Uh, we will have, in that way, we will have this upwards casting position to save uh, space into the molding box because uh, if we uh, turn it 90 degrees around, 
uh, we will need a lot of more space and we also have a limited riser range of the side risers we would use then in that case and therefore we go here just with two risers on top because this is the for the process the most easy way to access this but we already see or we can imagine that we will get in trouble with our narrowing section so in our first example we just added material there where you as a foundry man thinks okay if i would cast this uh, com uh, as a complete casting i will add material in that narrowed section which is the first approach we can do here so what we have to do is we add here uh, the padding material or the, the the exothermic material and we need a little core print to embed this into the core this can be by gluing or you can also shoot this uh, um, or whatever your process is able to do you can coat this or let it uh, coating free it's both is possible um, as you uh, have it in your process the best so let's check for the results in our simulation and we compare again on the left side with padding on the right side without and what you can see very very clear is as we estimated uh, on the right uh, on the right hand side you can see that the solidification is dividing in two areas which are solidifying um, um, parted in an upper part and in the lower part and on the left hand side you can see the solidification with the padding and you can see it behaves indeed like if it were if it is one piece here uh, because of the core print it's a little bit uh, also directed in this in this section but if you just look at the isotherm uh, behavior you can see this behaves more or less like a like a full casting here but i stop it here you can see our problem it's behaving just in the thermal way like uh, extra material uh, in that way so we have no material transport through the padding which is of course you can imagine that this is not possible because it's it's not it's not steel or iron or type of metal so therefore you will also have here a section which is um, not connected to the rest of the solidification even if it's in uh, a thermal way uh, looking good so let's check about our hot uh, our porosity for this solution and what we can see is okay with the padding we can move a little bit the porosity upwards towards this uh, this uh, narrowing section compared to the version without the padding but we are not really satisfied with the result so we need to uh, check if there is another solution so the the um the, the 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 base meaning of the padding is working so that it's behaving uh, or that it's putting energy inside and that it's um, um, uh, um, taking this to a, to a solidification which is more or less like like you have extra material but there is no material transport through the padding so what to do next so what we have to do now is we need to uh, get solidification uh, on the outside around this narrowing section that means we need to place the padding not inside but outside and so that we get uh, um, also in the molding line uh, a good behavior we need to fill this uh, this area until the flange because otherwise we will get an undercut and so we have to fill it completely up to the flange starts so this will be our next approach with a padding and we will check here for our simulation result again we look at fraction liquid and we can see the behavior here of the version without the padding is still the same 
And we can see, okay, this is working quite well because here we are more or less, we can move around the narrowing section. But if I go step by step in the notification, we have a, another small issue because now we have due to the huge energy I put in through the padding, my solidification time of the component raises a lot. And therefore, as you might know, the solidification time is also determining, determining the, 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 the module of a casting. That means now we have an issue that I have a riser on top and I have a small section here, which is not, which could not be feeded anymore because we need a little bit more feeding power. So we check for the porosity and we see exactly that. So it's much, much better. The picture now is much, much better, but we still have two spots of porosity directly under the riser. That means here we need also, if you design a padding, you have to keep always in mind that you are influencing your solidification time with that. That means if you put more energy inside and more heat inside, the solidification time will get bigger and so your modulus will also grow. So you need to answer that with, uh, it, or you need to consider that in your feeding concept. So what to do now? So we have two possibilities. That means uh, we have two ways for solving this problem. On the one hand, we can adapt our padding. Uh, we can reduce the thermal potential of the padding. That means we can either uh, try to uh, make it smaller, but in that case, what we check here, we have that issue with uh, the undercut if we, if we um, make it smaller on, on, on top. And we also have the possibility to get uh, less energy inside by uh, uh, less energy containing mix of the of the padding. But we need also to make sure that our uh, narrowed section uh, will remain open until this point of solidification when it when it's going up. So therefore, this may have some difficulties and is also very hard to detect. So therefore, there's also another option that we increase the thermal potential of our risers. So in the first way, we can just take a bigger riser. That would be an option. Or we can also use uh, a hotter mixture or a, a higher, uh, or we can put more energy into the mixture of the, of the riser. And in many cases, this is the most cost effective solution. So you need not more space on the plate. So you have more or less the same riser, but if you can put a little bit more energy inside and we see this was not so, not so much we need here. So maybe this could be a solution for us. So we take this and here we have, and we look at the simulation just with uh, our uh, riser mix with a uh, more, with more power in our mixture. So what we can see is our behavior, what we can, what we have seen before already. So we also have a very clean solidification around our narrowed section. And I take it picture by picture. You can see now we have a perfect directed solidification here. And that we should see also in our porosity analysis. So that means, as you can see here, now you have a sound casting compared with a version without the padding. What you also can see is that the total void volume in your risers on top is much bigger than in the version before. That means also your risers is more, or your risers become more effective here because all the uh, the, the, the volume deficit you, you the, 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 the steel has here or the, the iron has here is now on top in the, in the residual uh, uh, of the riser and not in the casting. So 
now this is a solution uh, maybe we want to we want to try I just want to show you how this is uh, why this uh, is working in that way or what you should consider here so this is one more time this module comparison and you can see that the module of your casted component from the beginning without padding is raising as you put more and more energy with the padding inside that means also your thermal modulus of the casting uh, unless you don't change the geometry itself but just by putting more energy inside is a little bit is uh, or becomes higher and higher and therefore you need to consider this also in your feeding solution or in your uh, in in your feeding process but what you can see also is that from step to step to step yeah you become also from with which each iteration you come closer to the target and this is what you can see so normally um, uh, so this is the way we want to show you how to develop from the beginning on step by step kind of padding and so that you know the padding is just one part of your feeding system so you can also uh, it's just a, another tool to get a directed certification ready for your casting so all your other uh, uh, tools like chill irons or like feeders are still needed but here you have more possibilities and you can widen your portfolio and you can achieve feasibilities of castings which you normally could not okay so we have a software solution now we need to get it uh, as hardware so how can i now get this into my real casting away from simulation into the foundry so at first there are two ways of uh, handling a padding so the first one is that you order direct uh, at ASK a ready geometry so a ready uh, a ready to use piece uh, which you can or ready to use padding which you can just put in your in your molding box or in your core box and that's it but there's also another way you can do this also on your own so you can also uh, get from from our side uh, these exothermic or insulating mixes and produce a padding or what you need in your foundry process for yourself but therefore we need to take into account some thoughts the first one is what kind of mix do i need do i need an exothermic base compound or do i need an insulating base compound the exothermic base compound of course have the maximum uh, effectivity that means you have here almost a one by one replacement compared to casting material of course in a just in the thermal way as we've seen in the in the example your microstructure corresponds uh, to the solidification time that means if you put on exothermic material and you uh, have a higher solidification time than normally uh, a wall thickness uh, should have you need to consider that but this is not only a threat this is also a chance so in cases that you have to suffer from hard edges or from uh, white uh, iron uh, inclusions or something like that this could be also a way of solving that then you have also inside the exothermic mix you have some elements which are reactive because you need this for exothermic reaction and all these components should be considered that they can also react with your with your uh, melt but you can avoid that or limit that by uh, using a coating here so if you need some uh, expertise which kind of coating you use best and which is the best one for your kind of process please refer to our coating experts they are, will be glad to uh, give you here uh, uh, some some uh, good choices also you are limited in the in the choice of binders because um, the exothermic material has some um, uh, 
components which may react with some other uh, components in some binders, but we will come later on this issue. And of course, if you want to do that in your core shooter, or do you want to produce uh, a padding in your core shooter, exothermic one, you have to consider also some uh, explosion protection measures and also for some, some other safety issues. Uh, uh, but we can help you here if you have any questions, how, what you need to realize that. On the other hand, you have an insulation-based compound. So there you have an almost unlimited choice uh, from, from the binder point of view. You can more or less easily shoot this on your own core shooter. Um, the materials used in the insulating base compound are more or less uh, have a neutral behavior or an inert behavior. That means it's, it's, uh, no, no reactive materials are inside. So this is a, this is a big point. But you have no additional energy input through this insulating padding that you need to consider. That means you can keep your heat, which you bring in by your melt, longer in the system, but there is nothing to bring on top. So that means it's in most cases, uh, much more material is necessary. And in some cases, also the effects of an exothermic padding could not be reached with an, uh, with an insulating one. Um, also, some uh, alloys are only possible with an insulating base compound. Staying with the exothermic compounds. So in our uh, portfolio, we have uh, some different um, exothermic compounds which we can use for the paddings. Um, you have the choice um, of uh, how much energy is in the mix and also how fast the ignition time uh, or how fast the ignition will take place and also the fire resistance you can choose here for this different type of, uh, of mixes. So you have some uh, things you can combine here. This is depending on your casting alloy, your uh, size of the casting the um, and, and some other uh, things, but please feel free to contact us, which could be the best one for your casting. We will help you here. We strongly recommend, of course, in ductile iron to use a fluorine free um, formulation to avoid any graphite uh, uh, degeneration uh, on the casting surface where it, where, where it gets in contact with a, with a melt. Um, this is strongly recommended here to not get in trouble with your with your graphite formation. The mix is in principle designed for a cold box use. That means cold box and Pepset are the main uh, binders you should use here. So there is maybe um, a solution for for another binder like LinoCore maybe also a silicate one, but you will not receive the surface quality and the, um, and the properties you will have with the code box process or the, the, the adequate no-bake process with, uh, with Pepset. Um, please don't use it together with any acid hardening binders uh, or alkaline phenolic resins or silicate esters, because here we can have already some reactions between the binder and the exothermic mix. So this is uh, not, not recommended. If you have any questions about that, about quantities of use and how to, how to do that and what you can use here and what is possible. So please feel free to ask uh, our team and um, you will find a very good solution for that here. On the other hand, you have the insulating compounds. Um, here you have our exact term SDL210, which is a very lightweight insulating material, and you can mix this with sand. The graph you can see here is a curve uh, about the mixing uh, or the blending uh, uh, value of this one uh, compared to the uh, thermal conductivity. 
and you can see the more of the, uh, the more you put in of these uh, lightweight material the lower the thermal conductivity gets and the better your insulation properties are but also here there are a few limits especially when you shoot this on a core uh, 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 on the core shooter, you need a little bit of sand to, to keep flowability in the system. That means you need a little bit of sand so that this this very light mix uh, is going into your core box and fills it uh, in the way you want to. Uh, and then the last one, please also, uh, as I said, this is a very lightweight material. This that means we have a very low bulk density of the material. And of course, with that, the amount of binder is uh, uh, raising here. Um, in principle, all organic binders are suitable for that process. In, you can, of course, you can also use inorganic binder systems, but uh, they will, uh, um, higher the thermal conductivity and also the um, surfaces could be not that nice uh, as with an organic binding uh, as with an organic binder especially in long solidification times and uh, high temperature alloys so uh, using this in uh, some some um, smaller castings or with uh, low uh, solidification times this is all. Is, it might be possible to use also an uh, inorganic binding system, but recommended here is an organic uh, system. 